Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at SAT math problems that have to do with slope and linear equations. So we're going to do a quick review of how to calculate slope, all the different ways you can calculate slope from a graph, uh, from an equation, whether that equation is in slope-intercept form or in standard form, or from a table, or from two points. And then we're going to take a look at y-intercept as well and put those two concepts together. Then I've got six uh, problems from the official SAT practice test that we're going to solve and explain as well. Let's take a look. Alright, so let's review slope. Slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x. Another way we see that written is uh, delta y over delta x. Delta just stands for the difference or the change. We can also see that written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We just take the two y values of the points that we have and divide it by the difference of the two x values of the point that we have. Or graphically, you might see it referred to the rise over the run. So how much it changes up and down divided by how much it changes left and right. So let's take a look at all the different ways to calculate slope. So in a graph, we're going to take two points. Uh, you want to take two points that um, you can figure out where they are. See those two points cross um, right at whole numbers. And then we want to see how much y changes or how much the rise is. So to go from one point to the other, we've got to go up by 6. And then we have to go over by 9. So the difference in y over the difference in x or the rise over the run is going to be 6 over 9. And then we can reduce that fraction to 2 thirds. When we have two numbers, uh, the first one we can label x1 and y1, and the second point we can label x2 and y2. So to find the slope of the line that goes through those two, the numerator is going to be the difference in the y's. The denominator is going to be the difference in the x's. So we subtract those out and we get 4 over 6. And again, reduce the fraction whenever we can, and we get 2 over 3. Now if we have a table of values, uh, it's very similar to doing it with two points. We just pick one of the points that we're going to use. So here, the 4 and the 2 gets us the numerator. And then the 6 and the 3, the difference of those two, gets us the denominator. And we can pick any point. One thing to keep in mind though, we've got to go in the same direction. So if we go 4 minus 2, we've got to do 6 minus 3. Don't switch it around and subtract the other way. We all, you can do 3 minus 6 and 2 minus 4. You just need to keep consistent. And then there we get 2 over 3. So now an equation. Notice this equation is solved for y. This is in slope-intercept form. We can just pick the number that is being multiplied by the x, and that's our slope. So 2 over 3 is our slope. Now if we have an equation that's not solved for y, we've got two different choices. We can solve it for y. So if I add 2x to both sides and divide both sides by 3, uh, I can solve for y. And then I can get the slope by the number that's being multiplied by x. Or we can look at this in standard form. So standard form is ax plus by equals c. So a represents the number that's being multiplied by x. b represents the number being multiplied by y. So to find the slope without converting it uh, and solving for y, the slope is negative a over b. So in this equation, it's going to be negative, negative 2 over 3. We just pick the a and the b value from the equation. And then negative a negative 2 gets us positive 2 or 2 over 3. Now let's take a look at the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is, on a graph, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis. It is also the y-value when x is equal to 0. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So back to our same graph, the point where it crosses the y-axis is right there. And what's the y-value for that? The y value for that is negative 2. So we say the y intercept is negative 2. 
Now, if we have a table of numbers, um, the y value when x equals 0. So notice back at the graph, if we have whatever our y intercept is, whatever our y value is where it crosses, the x value is going to be 0. So if we look at the table and find where the x value is 0, then that also will get us that same point. The y value for that point is our y intercept. So for this, that's going to be y equals negative 2. Now an equation, again, if the equation is solved for y, it's in slope-intercept form. And we can just pick the number that's not being multiplied by x uh, with the sign. And negative 2 is our intercept here. If we have it not solved for y, again, we can do two different ways. We can solve for y and then pick off the um, y-intercept, which is the number that's by itself. Or in, in standard form, ax plus by equals c, the y-intercept is going to be c over b. So in this case, it's negative 6 over 3 or negative 2. One last thing I want to take a look at is um, parallel and perpendicular lines. Uh, so parallel lines have equal slope. So if we look at that same graph we've been looking at, y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. If we have another line with the same slope, y equals 2 thirds x, or y equals 2 thirds x plus 2, all those lines have the same slope of 2 thirds, and they're going to be parallel. Perpendicular lines have a negative reciprocal slope. So y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. What negative reciprocal is? First, reciprocal, we flip over the 2 thirds. So instead of 2 thirds, it's going to be 3 over 2. And then we make it negative. So if we've got y equals negative 3 halves x minus 2, that's going to be perpendicular to that. And anything with that slope, anything with a negative 3 over 2 slope, is going to be perpendicular to our purple line there, which has 2 over 3 as our slope. OK, let's take a look at these six SAT math problems that have to do with slope and linear equations. So the first one I'm going to look at here uh, says, which of the following is the graph of 2x minus 5? 2x minus 5. So we know that the slope is going to be 2, and the y-intercept is going to be negative 5. So this one has a y-intercept of negative 5. This one has an intercept of negative 5. So these two are out because they don't have the right y-intercept. And then the slope is positive 2. So this is a negative slope because it's going down. And this is a positive slope. So our answer is going to be D. And we can double check to make sure it is a positive slope of 2, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So it is a slope of 2 as well. All right, which of the following statements is true about the graph of the equation? 2y minus 3x equals negative 4. And then we're just looking to see if the slope is negative or positive and the y-intercept is negative or positive, and that'll lead us to the right answer. I'm going to do it two different ways, whichever way you're most comfortable with. Um, so 2y minus 3x equals negative 4. Uh, first way I'm going to do is put it into y in, uh, slope-intercept form by solving for y. Uh, so I can add... 3x to both sides and get 2y equals 3x minus 4 then divide by 2 and you get y equals 3 halves x minus 2 so the slope is positive and the y intercept is negative so positive slope, negative y-intercept, answer D. Now another way I want to show you, um, if you use the um, A, B, and C from the 2y minus 3x equals negative 4. So um, in standard form, A is with the x. So the A is going to be negative 3. So a little tricky here. They put it y and x first. Just remember. Uh, the A is with the X. Your B is going to be positive 2. 
and your C is going to be negative 4. And so to calculate our slope, slope is negative A over B, or negative negative 3, which is 3 over 2. Our slope is positive. Y-intercept from standard form is going to be C over B, which is 4, sorry, negative 4, negative 4 over 2, which is just negative 2, so that is negative. So we have a positive slope and a negative y-intercept, which also leads us to choice D. All right, on the third one here, we have a um, graph of the co total cost of a cab ride. And it's just asking us to interpret this to get the cost for each additional mile. So for each additional mile, that's going to be the slope. So we're going to try to find the slope. This starting point here, that's the initial cost. So this charges $3 initial cost. And then whatever the slope is, however much is changing for each mile, uh, is what we're looking for. So we go up 2 over 1. So the slope is 1, which gets us $2. We could also, once we know that the initial cost is 3, we could take any point and go, OK, 5 gets us 13. So for 5 additional miles, there's 10 miles on top of the 3. So again, it gets us 2 as the answer. Okay, um, here it's just asking us what um, this graph is. A um, couple different ways we could do it. We could take um, some of these uh, 0, negative 4, or negative 4, 0, or negative 2, negative 2, and plug them in and see which ones work. Problem is, it may work if we just pick one point, it may work in a couple equations. I think an easier way to do it is just to solve each of these for y, uh, just being careful with our, um, with our signs. If we solve each of these for y, we get y equals x plus 4, y equals x minus 4, y equals negative x minus 4, and y equals negative x plus 4. And we're looking for y-intercept of negative 4 and a slope, a negative slope, and it is a slope of one. Uh, so the answer that gets us uh, negative four for a y-intercept is here or here. And then this one has the negative slope. So it's going to be C. And again, you could take a point and put it in. And um, if you get two answers that work for that point, then you just have to take another point and see if that, if that works, um, if that eliminates one of them as well. All right, so we're looking here. We have a graph. Um, this, uh, talking about a perpendicular line to this, which is not shown on the graph, um, that passes through 1, 3. And for that graph, what's the value at 0? So a lot of information there. So let's break it down. So first of all, what is the slope of this line that's here? So up to over negative 1. So the slope of this line is negative 2. So the slope of the perpendicular line is the negative reciprocal of that. So the reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2. And we negate it from negative to positive. So our slope in the perpendicular one is going to be 1 half. So it goes through the point 1, 3. All right, so that's a point on our new line. And our slope is 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 puts us here. Or we can go the other direction, down 1 and over 2. So that's our line. 
and we can see here we're going down one and over two so it's going to go exactly halfway between two and three so that is our value of g of zero which is going to be 2.5 All right, and our final question, whenever they have scatter plots, but then draw the best fit line and ask you about the best fit line, all it is is just doing information on that line. Um, unless they ask you about points uh, that, are, that are away from the line, they're just asking you for information on that line. Um, so we just want to find the equation of that best fit line. Um, notice here that this is not the y-intercept you'll notice not, there are no y-intercepts on these anyways but that's not that's at 120 so sometimes they trick you into thinking that that's a y-intercept but it's not starting at zero so it's not the y-intercept right the y-intercept you'd have to continue down so all we're looking for is the slope is the slope uh, negative or positive 2 or negative positive uh, 0.5 so all we have to do is take two points do the change in y or the rise that's going to be 20 the run is going to be 40. It's a positive slope. Those are both positives up and to the right. So we get 20 over 40 or 1 half or 0.5. So the slope here is going to be 0.5. And then that's going to get us the answer of B. Thanks for watching, and if you have an SAT coming up, good luck. I'm going to continue to add SAT material, so if you'd like to subscribe right up here, you can get notification of when new material comes out, and I've got some more stuff for you to watch right here. Thanks again for watching, and please come back soon.